There is a wonderful line in the musical, The Wizard of Oz, when the wizard tells the Tin Man, a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. The outpouring of love and concern that India saw on August 14th, 2022, the day Rakesh Junjunwala passed away, is a testament to how beloved and idealized he had become as an icon in Indian capital markets. The story of his life became the history of modern Dalal Street. Hello everyone, I'm Ramesh Damani, your host of this very special edition of Wizards, which we are calling Remembering Rakesh. Today is a bittersweet moment for me. Rakesh was my very first guest on Wizards when we started the series in 2005. Today, we're gathered to pay him a final tribute. With me to discuss his life, legacy and learnings are some of the people who were closest to him. But first, a throwback to his first appearance on Wizards. The first quality I needed as an investor is to be an optimist. I remember what Peter Lynch says that wars have come and terror has come and natural disasters have come but company profits have gone up. So you have to be the eternal optimist if you want to invest in stock. Joining me today are Bhaskar Bhatt, Director of Tata Sons, Utpal Shet, CEO of Rare Enterprises, Amit Goela, Partner Rare Enterprises, and N. Jay Kumar, Managing Director, Prime Securities. Bhaskar, let me start with you. Do you remember where and when you met Rakesh for the first time? Quite clearly, I don't remember the date, though it was uh, uh, 2001, around, I think, uh, November or December. He'd come to the office, and a common friend had uh, asked for a meeting with me. I had not yet taken over as uh, managing director. And uh, it was uh, <laughs> late in the evening. And frankly, uh, to be really honest, I thought it was a waste of time meeting people who were from outside the ecosystem of uh, the company because I had uh, you know, more other things to do with the sales reviews or <laughs> business reviews and so no on. No time but for him. <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> Frankly, uh, you know, it was a common friend who said, uh, baje, uh, aayenge. I said, yeah, lay out here. I mean, a curtsy. And uh, on that, that evening, I remember clearly. But he remembered more clearly than I did. He remembered many words, many sentences, many actions of mine, which he kept repeating much later, uh, which I didn't remember. So you really went from being indifferent to meeting him to being dazzled in the course of that one meeting? More than everything else that he gave, to me, the time he gave was the most valuable, you know. Therefore, you know, whether time on the phone, whether time to meet physically, so the every meeting uh, to me, in a way, the uninitiated in this world of, uh, you know, investing, as in, you know, running a company and creating value for a company I, is very far, at least at that time, from the language, the, the approach, the thesis that uh, investors were using. And particularly with Rakesh, it was a very different thesis. So every time, you know, I hear him listen, argue, fight, but finally end up learning something new. Well, what motivated your boss? Um, Rakesh, I think, was an eclectic investor. He was open-minded, had very strong opinions. And what motivated him was his own aspiration for himself. It was not something outside of him. Internally driven. He was deeply internally driven. He was a 24 by 7 person. Is it true he never in... looked at you when you came to the market during business hours because you were looking at the screen? No, no. He would look at both. <laughs> More at the screen maybe, but he would still look at both. Uh, but uh, I think what drove him was his intense belief in India. His intense belief in himself and his intense belief in the power of the equity markets to create value and to create wealth. Putpal, they also say that markets give you exactly what you want in life. It's your Rorschach test almost. What did he really want from his life, Rakesh? Uh, Rakesh, he wanted, above everything else, 
for his beliefs and his convictions to be proven right, to be vindicated. And he of course more than achieved that. But uh, I would say that Rakeshi felt that he would, it, it was not the quantum of wealth that would, he would make, but if India became the India that he had in his dreams, then that would have made that him the happiest. Amit, who were Rakesh's earliest friends in the market? So, hi Ramesh. Uh, so, from what I know, there was a trio at that point of time. There was Mr. Radhakishan Damani, there was a gentleman, Mr. Rajiv Shah, who unfortunately passed, passed away. away, Rakesh, and there was one more gentleman, Nimesh Shah. These were, they all came to the markets at the same time. Around 85. Around 85, different age, different backgrounds, but they all came to the market with a single objective and they became very close friends. And that friendship endured till... What binded them together, Amit? I think three, four things binded them together. One was their core belief in India. I think they were light years ahead of everybody. They figured out that India is on a different growth trajectory. Second, I believe, they all believed that even though Bombay Stock Exchange at that point of time had a little bit of an unsavory reputation, it was a cabal of people or a group of people who controlled it, they all believed that over a period of time, Capital markets will allocate capital efficiently to good companies and they can make wealth over there over a period, long period of time. Legitimately. Legitimately and ethically. Jake, quantify Rakesh's financial genius for me. Tell me his track record. He famously said, which is also a statement of fact, that he came in with 5,000 rupees. And the last estimated wealth is, say, $5 billion, which is 40,000 crores. Now, 5,000 rupees in 35, 37 years going to 40,000 crores is a mere 64% compounding. <laughs> mere. Yes, and you yet, drop, drop it onto the floor when you hear that. And yet, some people will say, but you know, Warren Buffett, dollar terms, we said, hey, wait a minute. 5,000 rupees in 1985 was $500. $5 billion, billion today, five, $500 to $5 billion is a jaw-dropping 54%, which, is, which dwarfs Warren Buffett by only two and a half. It's a two and a half X over Warren Buffett for a person who started with literally 5,000 rupees, no grandfathering, came into an imperfect market, made it, you know, the way he did. And for a person who created capital by trading. He's the only one in the Forbes 400 who made it Abs through There's nobody investing. else in the top 400 who's made it only through equity markets. It's, an, it's a staggering... Uh, others may have given, had, had listed companies where they got money from the outside. Right. He created his capital right. through trading, huh. paid full taxes, was the highest taxpayer virtually amongst the ilk that we talk about huh. through this period of 37 years hmm. and gave a return to himself and his only investor, Rekha. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as he always famously said. You know, this is time for a break. Let's look at the snapshots for the big bull's life. And welcome back to a special episode of Wizards of the Street, Remembering Rakesh. Uh, Bhaskar, let me ask you again. Is it fair to say that his understanding of Titan was even ahead of management, so the promoters, when he first invested in Titan? I don't know about ahead or behind. Management was clearly, when I was the managing director, very, very focused on executing to a strategy which we had chosen ourselves. But like Rakesh believed in India, our belief in India came from our understanding of consumers, you know, because we were deeply in that. And therefore, we were investing in what we knew best. I think Rakesh's larger belief in the larger picture of India that was emerging, perhaps, you know, could be, uh, you know, aligned to what you're saying. But the, I think what he helped management do was... Every time, and I know, you know, Utpal was there uh, two times, I think, there, were a, there was a visit to Titan. And the difference between, if you were to call management board and so on, and him was, 
this team would come do a two day deep dive and inspire the management that rarely happens i would always find these interactions you know as if two sides of the table you know quizzing you on what you did wrong and what uh, you know uh, this was a two way street for this you this was for us like the management the youngsters in the team would say we've not heard a guy say this you know the belief in the company mm. not just in india and saying look i think you guys can go here and that uh, you know that you know when somebody talks like him talks like that to the management then you don't need esops and all you know to right. make people That's perform very But, very uh, uh, askar did did it surprise you yeah. that rakesh has held this huge stake in titan for over 20 years i mean did you expect that i frankly didn't in fact once uh, he did tell me he, he i think it was closer to when i was going to retire mm. and i think everybody knew about our relationship you know our friendship and so on so he once told me look you know baska i hope you know uh, i think i'll exit when my stake hits a billion dollars right i said look, rakesh on this part you know there's an understanding i will never tell you when what sell buy it's just not you know we know each on. other for some other reasons and i think we hit that number much earlier than i retired <laughs> i think he was thinking that it will be a little after i retire in fact you retired <laughs> when the stock price was the highest it had ever achieved I remember that day but utpal let me ask you uh, baskar talking about billions of dollars uh, rakesh made over 5 billion dollars that's also probably understating it but was making money his way of keeping score or was it just trying to be an income tax commissioner's son trying to escape his middle class roots what was it rakesh ji was a huge believer in capitalism and he felt equity markets were the temple of capitalism and he believed that eventually capital allocation helps you to create wealth he was doing what he believed in and that was all he was always focused on opportunities money was an outcome of that money was an outcome it was and he he believed that the means are as important as the end so therefore making money was just an outcome it was not the process understood and you've often said that amit that uh, rakesh wanted you to do it legitimately but you also once told me amit that you don't teach sachin tendulkar how to bat yeah. but even sachin retired did his illness and ill health in the last few years did that diminish his appetite for equities no no there was no nothing called quit in rakesh ji's uh, vocabulary mind thought process there was no quit over there so in fact uh, Ramesh, in the last couple of years, when he was going through a difficult time, the mood was not very good because of COVID. I think he made some of the most aggressive bets of his life. I think agility by his ask Utpal also. I think he was working at a performance level which I don't, I had not seen in the last five, seven years. Maybe in the full bull market, first one, but this time the it was just unbelievable what he was doing and some of the trades, some of the investments which he put out. they magnif- they multiplied several times he yeah. never lost his appetite jakes uh, they say that uh, he's made billions he never lost his appetite what are some of the techniques that you saw him use to become a successful investor you know i think it said that uh, it's not important how often you're right but how much you are in when you're right what i think nobody said? epitomized that better than rakesh you know in fact i used to be i would say almost <laughs> an open mouth you know shameless admirer of the way that he could do it because the ability to carry risk Uh, through leverage through futures trade to pyramid and do what uh, his conviction told him and every trade was a new trade forgetting the fact that you already had an exposure i'm sure that in his mind exposures were calculated he had that little pocket book where he would Famously, in the middle of the yeah. night tell you exactly what he was doing but i think the ability to leverage that is the most important thing and double up that is one one particular technique the other which i felt was uh, Many many moons ago, a gentleman called Ramesh Damani, uh, <laughs> R K Damani. Ouch! You will remind me. R K Damani and uh, Rakesh. We met when Pantaloons. At that time, it was the Future Group, uh, which has just been called Pantaloons. Had a market cap of 20 crores, and there was 25 percent on offer at par. And the three gentlemen in question uh, uh, spoke to Kishore Biani for an hour and a half and passed the opportunity. Never mind. I thought you know these things happen. So as a banker, many six months later, we placed it out, etc. Stock went up to about hundred over a year. Rakesh identified an opportunity because certainty had given place to uncertainty at that time. I remember him coming in at a hundred, 
and he rode the wave up to an average of 1800 rupees and i think that the fact that something has happened this in maths they call it a no memory property he just shut out the past and said the, past, the opportunity yeah. is now so the ability to get caught up in your own beliefs which people have you know which makes you say but i looked at the stock at price x it doesn't matter if you did what well, did you do uh, jake said so you said but just to set the record straight one r of course twaddle his thumbs the other r build a retail empire and the third r actually invested in the stock so it, there was some sort of happy ending to it but uh, let me ask you uh, he what i had is an investor and speculator jakes okay that's enormously difficult to do isn't it enormously difficult when put together i have actually had situations where he would be aggressively short in the in the futures while holding stock and he would wear the two as seamlessly it was almost as if if you didn't understand biology you had a left brain and a right brain that worked in parallel without a problem nobody has been able to get the dichotomy right but i think he did it and that's what made him hold on to stocks while using the market mechanisms to insulate against a potential fall and that's what i mean i think he was a bigger trading genius that has been made out and he was a bigger investor that has been made out because you put the two together it's almost impossible it's almost impossible to do it i agree with you as having tried both of them and failed miserably at them but with let me turn to you uh, a lot has been said about rakesh the investor i want you to give me a few points about rakesh the man thanks ramesh for asking me that question i think not much has been said about that first thing right on the bat i think rakesh was the most fearless man i have ever come across he knew no fear he did not know the meaning of the word fear whoever he was meeting right from the prime minister down to a company promoter or anybody he was completely fearless that was the biggest thing about him i feel second was his transparency is what you saw is what you got there was no difference between what he was thinking and what he was saying open the, book he was a completely transparent open book which was uh, as open as could be there was nothing private or public with him what he spoke in private maybe he spoke more loudly in public Correct. rather than trying to be talking in whispers or hushing it up yeah so these were the two things third was i think one thing which i saw of rakesh towards his end close towards the end was his stoicism you see he asked for no quarters he gave no quarters towards the last year or so things were getting hard for him L one by one lot of things which he liked had to were he had to give up by force not that he wanted to give up he didn't have a choice and he never, never ever complained, complained. Yeah, he never blamed anybody for it he never asked for any sympathy i think that was just unbelievable but i mean you him. also told me that you really uh, were touched